June 20th, the official day is, is tomorrow, in honor of World Refugee Day. Uh, tonight's event honors refugees, all refugees, all 15 million refugees. We honor them wherever they are, 
whether they have come to this country to start new lives or whether they are waiting for years and years and years in refugee camps. We honor those who are right now, as I speak, in the process of fleeing for their safety. And we honor those who didn't make it. We honor refugees by honoring their art and honoring refugees through art. One of my favorite posters for refugee resettlement, it's upstairs, you'll see it. It's a photograph of Albert Einstein, and it says, refugees bring more than a bundle of belongings to this country. Well, as you'll see today, this evening, refugees and immigrants bring amazing skills and talent and creativity. It's Greta, who is going to welcome you on behalf of Pierre, the co-host of this event. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Greta Scharnweber, and I work uh, here in this building, which is called the Macmillan Center. And on behalf of the Macmillan Center and my colleagues with Peer, which is a long acronym standing for Programs and International Educational Resources, um, we'd like to welcome you um, to our place on campus, on Yale's campus, where we promote the study of uh, global issues, international um, international events and uh, run all kinds of programs throughout the year um, that are open to the public. So I hope if this is your first time to the Macmillan Center, I do hope we'll see you again. Um, tonight, of course, um, I, I'd like to first introduce uh, my colleague, also Max Ammo, who uh, works in African Studies in the programs tonight that, um, of course, given the world areas that we work on on a daily basis, refugee issues, of course, are near and dear to our hearts. So it's our pleasure to um, to be able to co-host this event, and we commend IRIS for the work that they do in the state of Connecticut and beyond, and for the work that they do with the teachers that we work with to um, promote knowledge and understanding of refugee issues. Um, I just wanted to say one last thing about art. Um, and the power that art has, of course, to change minds. And that's what we try to do here in promoting knowledge of the world, um, to try to change minds of teachers, of students, um, and of other types of educators and of, of our community that we live in, to change their minds, um, to inform them about issues around the world that we need to know about. Um, so that's part of what we're trying to accomplish here today as well. And, um, and I know that the art that you're seeing upstairs and what you've already heard this evening um, will touch you and will change your mind about many things. So welcome and I commend all of those artists who are contributing tonight, um, especially Susan Kalinard, who is really taking a leading role in organizing this wonderful event. And um, with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Chris um, to get on with who you really want to hear. <laughs> he will join us today. Uh, Sehu Saidi was born in the Gambia. He came to the United States in 1970 to study just up the road. Chris, good evening everyone. Good evening. I am honored to be here. Uh, I should like to start by saying thank you very much to, uh, to Chris George, to uh, Susan Klinar, being, a, being with refugee is something that stays with you. When you have been to the camps, when you've worked with Rev Impact, of that experience is one that leads you. You may not be able to experience what the refugee experienced, but the fact that you were with them, you saw their problems, you empathized with them, you sympathized, um, you were able to have that feeling stay with you um, for as long as you live. And although I moved to New York, I'm constantly reminded uh, of the refugee condition. If you who read the New York Times, all of last week, from the 8th of June to the 16th of June, they ran a set of articles. They never called them a series, but perhaps I, I will call them a series because I, I, when I read the first one, it was about people who, migrants, it was about Koreans. So 40,000 Korean children are attending schools in Australia, in New Zealand, uh, in Canada. Uh, and these are all at the primary school level, at the secondary school level. I say it's a form of migration. So I was struck by that article in the sense that these people I knew left out of choice, uh, as opposed to the people I'll be talking about later, the refugees and, and the internally displaced person. 
But the next day, I mean, because I read the newspaper the other day, my eye, I went looking for, you know, something in this area, and I saw that they had something on illegal immigrants from Florida. Uh, these were Mexicans. They had come to Florida after Hurricane Ivan, um, and they helped um, with whatever work that was needed to rebuild, reconstruct, rehabilitate that area, and they stayed on. And of course, today it's not so fashionable for them to be in the area, and the police are making efforts to move them out. Um, the following day, there was an article about a different way of looking at dealing with migrants, and that was in Spain. Spain gave amnesty to all the illegal aliens that were in the country, effectively turning them into citizens. As good as that was in Spain, it was likely the report said to have consequences for all the European countries. And all the European countries were concerned that the Spanish move would bring more people into Spain and then from Spain they will go into the rest of the rest of Europe. And then that was also this was followed by an article on Muslim women in France and the processes they had to go to go from traditional society modern society, allowing themselves to become part of the society, and yet when it came to marriage, there were certain things they needed to do. And so going back to hospitals, finding doctors, and taking care of themselves in ways that would make them uh, eligible for, for marriage in the traditional uh, way. So this then continued into a number of articles which ended on Saturday, uh, with immigrants in the banlieues of France, uh, Paris, and, and some of the major cities. I recommend it as good reading in terms of uh, further exposure to the, the refugee, internally displaced person situation um, in, in the world.